Well, I am a Pakistani by birth. I'm a Canadian by choice. I am a practicing observant Muslim. And therefore, I believe that uh, the, the children of Abraham, the Jews, the Christians and Muslims, need to learn to live together and they need to respect each other and the rise of anti-Semitism in the Muslim world is something that really bothers me and I know it's political and not theological and that is what I wanted to explain to the audience here today that don't think that we are taught in the Quran how to hate the Jews this is something that is very political and we need to fight it on political grounds and so we have to speak out and this has to come from within the Muslim communities I am part of a Muslim reform movement and part of the reform is to recognize the right of Israel to exist as a country and have then a conversation as equals and talk about whatever issues we have. But when you're talking about the issue that you mentioned now, uh, we're talking about a partner that cut every day from his budget to the terrorist family. Well, that, the pro problem is that, you know, when you start having conversations, you can talk about these issues. But if the other side won't even recognize the right of Israel to exist, how can you have a conversation? How can you take care of your differences? There can be differences throughout the world. This and is the beginning. This is the beginning. And peace can only come when two parties want peace. If one party doesn't want peace, then you can't have peace. So it is up to them to come together, but there has to be equal recognition. And then we can, they can start a conversation. It has to be a beginning of something. And today we have, uh, again, terrorist attacks in the uh, Ariel city. Do you think this is the real peace that uh, the Palestinians want? Or maybe you say this is the fault of uh, the Palestinian leader? Yeah, I do believe it is the fault of the leadership, of the Palestinian leadership, because the ordinary person, the youth are suffering. They want to live their everyday lives. They want to go nine to five to work like everybody else. They want to bring up their children in peace. But the leadership is very problematic because they do not allow this to happen. And, you know, this, if this goes on, if this, these terror, terrorist attacks go on, then you don't have time to sit down around the table and talk peace. So definitely there is a leadership problem. And uh, when you think about a two-state solution, you think that it uh, can happen with the, the other partner? You know, I don't feel I'm in a position to speak about that because this has to come from the people who are living together, whether they can live together or whether they can, you know, whether they cannot live together. But the question is that something has to be resolved, whether it's one state or two state, there has to be a way in which everybody, every human being can have their human rights. I'm a human rights activist. I want human rights for everyone, for Israelis, for Palestinians, for Jews, for Muslims, for Christians. And this conflict over land has got to stop. You know, this is not the way that thing, things are going to move. So I'm glad that Jerusalem is going to become the capital of Israel because I think it will force the world to take notice and it will make them come round to the fact that this is a country that has a right to exist. It's a wonderful world, but uh, I have to say to you that uh, maybe uh, the Palestinians need to understand that with terror, terror you cannot win, you're always going to lose. So maybe it's something that uh, translates that people uh, translate every day the Quran. Maybe that's something a mistake or something we're missing over here. Maybe you have a message to the other side. Well, you know that the scriptures and similarly the Quran has been misunderstood and misinterpreted to justify various means. But I'll tell you one thing very simple. There is a line in the Quran that says to kill one person is like killing all of humanity. And I understand that this is in the Old Testament as well. And so we have to understand that Islam and Muslims are only the third sibling of the Abrahamic faiths. You know, we are not... Uh, a standalone faith. So, until and unless Muslims understand that in order to be a good Muslim, you have to respect the other two faiths that came before, which is the Christians and the Jews, we cannot really practice our faith in all its honesty. You fight it all your life. What's your secret? I do this for the future of my children and my grandchildren. I do this so that they can have a better world. I do this because I do not like violence. I do this because I want to take back the soul of my faith. And that is why I do this. And what do you say the people that are watching us now? And what do you say about the people that are looking for you? <laughs> the people who are looking for me, you can run. Uh, and, and I can run. And if, if I am on the path of truth and justice, I will continue to do what I'm doing because I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of people. I'm afraid only of God because that's who I'm answerable to. And to people I say, just be good human beings. Just love each other as equals.